Hey, I'm going to talk to you about mounting the dash and some of the accessories as well as how to plumb this unit up uh, for, for most efficiency. Now, to start with the mounting, uh, first of all, you have your base unit. Um, the physical mounting of it, there's uh, slots here in the slides. And make sure that you can get a good connection with them. Um, really prefer through the rail, the steel rail of the edge of the truck or the aluminum. Um, the reason why we want a really secure mounting here is because with the this dash is what supports the tote decks. So when you got totes up there, when you hit the brakes, this is where it gets its strength. And so we want to make sure we have a good secure mounting here. Um, so try to go through the steel, and make sure you put washers on the backside uh, for good mounting there. Um, steps and, and the decks, they're basically the U-bolt on. So it's quite simple there, pretty straightforward. Same as the boom. When you're mounting the boom, um, you're going to want to set this so the boom is level with the cradle. You, you bolt the cr cradle to the edge of the trailer. Um, I even like to have it hanging over just a little bit. Put the cradle to the edge of the um, trailer and then have, make sure that this is set so your boom is level. And then when you adjust your top one, there's a little bit more room for air here, but get your top one up. And then you want to adjust your length so that the... that this um, is on the ramp and so it slides up now you don't want it too low where it's going to be on the edge and hit you want to have it so it, it goes up on that ramp there so just watch that and adjust this so this link should be a little bit loose when it's in the cradle it shouldn't be right tight like it would be otherwise so um, take note of that um, as far as uh, cage pretty straightforward same thing uh, pads come to the edge make sure we bolt through the rail and uh, the tote platforms are more of a down weight, so they usually go through the wood decking or aluminum decking. Make sure that there's a washer underneath when you mount those. Uh, I'll talk about tanks for a second here. When you're bolting tanks down, um, make sure that they're not right tight on the tank, especially if it's cool out. If it's a really hot day, then it's fine for them to, t to be tight, but these tanks do expand in the sun, and so we want to leave a little room for when they expand in the sun that the, the bars don't get too tight. Um, the bolts underneath, just make sure you got a washer, if you, especially if you're going through wood, you know, put a bit of a bigger washer on there. If you're going through steel, then it's not such a big deal, but um, the load is really front to back on these tanks, not side to side. There is some side to side load, but it's very minimal compared to the, the front to back. So just think about that when you're mounting and, uh, and have that. So stairs, there's a template that we shipped you, you get the stair kit. Um, you put the template on the deck, you can drill your holes and this thing bolts up from underneath. So just pay attention to that. The manifold as well, you can put where you want. We usually like it kind of up closer to the dash. But it's just got two, two brackets that come up, drill holes through the deck, bolt it in. Um, you can put it on top of the deck too, for those who want it on top. You can take those brackets and bolt them the other way and assemble it the other way and then you have, have that. So, the last thing I'll just talk about here maybe is the plumbing. Plumbing is really important on this thing if you want its speed. Um, I'll talk about the three inch plumbing first. So the main water in on the dash is on the far side. So that's where the water is coming in. Now I'll talk about this system because we've got the full sump tanks here and with the manifold and it's all plumbed up um, using this manifold. So this manifold combines the flow from two tanks. These manifolds have oversized ports and then it's got a, a three inch that comes through there with an oversized inlet over to the dash. And what you want is those oversized inlets because you can get quite a bit more flow um, through that same three inch opening if it's got a bigger inlet. If it's too small, it's gonna have too much, it's almost have cavitation right there at the inlet and you're gonna lose some pump capacity. So if you have the manifold kit, some of that is taken care of for you. If you are plumbing this just to one tank, there's a couple of concerns or, or things to, to watch. One is if you just have one bulkhead, a bulkhead going into a standard tank with those necks in there, um, they're only rated for about 200 gallons a minute, whereas this pump is trying to do close to 400. So if you, what we really need is multiple bulkheads in one tank to draw out of two at a time. And the other thing to be really careful then if you're going with one tank is the venting on the, on the lid. Um, a lot of those vents cannot handle 400 gallons a minute. So just because you can get them out of the bottom, you've got to watch the top. So some guys will go and put an extra uh, three inch bulkhead with a drop hose and a valve on the side. So when they're loading, they can open it up and get air back in the tank. 
um, just to just speed it up. So that's that's one thing to be watchful of. Um, if you have the manifold system, you know we can draw from multiple tanks at one time. So we're only asking those bulkheads to do half the work anyway. Um, but just if you're drawing from one, be really careful with that. Another thing I'm going to mention is make sure you don't have any hard 90s. So you can buy sweeps versus a hard 90 like, um, elbows. So with every time you have a hard 90, you can lose, I think the first one is like 15 to 18% or something like that of your flow capacity of your pump. Your second one is like 11%, it's compounding. It's a bit of a curve. So a lot of guys, when I see their systems, they can be losing um, you know, 25 to 30% of their potential flow rates out of their pumps just because on the suction side, they've got hard 90. So make sure if you're gonna have any kind of elbows, if they're all, they're all sweeps, um, and so it's, it flows faster. So the other thing that the dash needs, so that's a three inch coming in. The other thing the dash needs is a one inch water line and uh, air, air supply. So there's a one inch hose that comes out of the, the back side there. That needs to be hooked to fresh water supply. So if you have um, a manifold system, there's a port on the back of this with, for a one inch uh, hose barb. So just turn that into there and you can pull out of here because that's drawn from multiple tanks. If you don't have a manifold kit, then plumb into the tank. And what I would do is, if you have a sight glass or something like that, just put an elbow in the bottom and draw out of the bottom of the sight, sight glass. Um, the other thing you need is air. So this thing needs air supply. Um, assuming you're on a semi-trailer with an air system on it already, I would hook this up to the tank on the trailer, the supply tank. Most of those supply tanks, they have extra fittings with just plugs in them. You can literally just turn in a hose barb. Um, do not use steel fittings. Uh, try to use brass fittings because steel on steel will leak. Um, if you don't want leaks in your trailers, then that's just try to stay with brass um, or hydraulic fittings. But um, so anyway, air comes into here. And if you, I mean, if you don't have an air truck plug, I can run a little compressor a little gas compressor or something like that on the deck and so this is where the air comes in. So this is what runs your rinse pump. That one inch line is what does all your rinse functions. That's its rinse source. So you want fresh water for that and then and do not hook that one inch rinse line into the three inch and try to tee off it somewhere close by because um, we're trying to put up to 400 gallons through that three inch line. We're taxing that three inch line. It really should be closer to four inch for those kind of flow rates. Taking another 40 gallons a minute out for that rinse pump is just too much. So we want a separate line to the tank um, or to fresh water supply either way. So that, that's some of the basics of how to mount this thing.